today, I'm going to update you on what's been happening with the community in the open source space. We've got some huge progress that's been made. We reached over 100,000 stars on GitHub. And there's no way that we could have reached this milestone without the incredible support of the community. I'm going to walk you through our blog post thanking everyone and giving you a bit of a behind the scenes on how we operate at Charm and how we were able to sustain this growth. All right, so this is our, this is how we do it, zero to 100K stars. <laughs> and this one was actually written by a founder of Charm, Christian. Christian's also our designer, so he did this. This video is so funny. I'm gonna introduce some bias here before you watch the video. <laughs> it's so dramatic. It's so over the top. It's so Charm. I think it's hilarious. So let me let me show you what I'm talking about. Oh, life is a mystery. Everyone must stand. I had to do the, I don't know, it, just, it felt right. Isn't that freaking adorable with all the little stars? Like my favorite is when it goes like the close up, like the star's eyes and they're like dead. <laughs> they're like these dead anime eyes. Do you know what I mean? Some of you are gonna totally geek out over these numbers. What I think is super cool is that there are companies that are using our libraries to improve the UX of their command line applications. Do you know what this means for us command line lovers? This means that it is finally getting the recognition that it deserves. These companies are putting time and money, getting familiar with our ecosystem so that they can elevate their command line interfaces. That is so cool. That to me is what stands out the most out of all of these stats. It gives me so much hope for the future. So here's a bit of the playbook of how we got to it. Obviously, you got to start with a problem. The whole point of software is that you're building some solution to a very human problem, or in this case, usually developer problems. We like to try and build tools that are going to elevate our existing processes. And typically when we have this pain point, obviously the first step is usually to find what's already out there. Is there a solution that can help alleviate this? And oftentimes we find that there isn't or at least there isn't something that's as usable as we want it to be. That kind of leads us to having to build it ourselves. Bubble Tea is a great example of this because we needed a framework that would allow us to write these TUIs in a way that is easy to work with and can handle a lot of different processes asynchronously. So Bubble Tea was born. There are also a bunch of different apps in the Charm ecosystem. VHS is one that stands out as one of the most popular. It really facilitates having to record examples and demos of your projects. We'll kind of get into our philosophy around building out examples further down the article. It's really awesome because the side effect of us needing to build these things to develop our own applications that we really wanna see exist has really elevated the Go community and the open source tooling that's available. In solving our own problems, we were able to connect with others who are having similar problems and provide them with solutions deep in our connection with the open source community. Being part of the open source community has its own challenges that we'll touch on a bit later. It is so worth it being able to connect with other developers in this way and collaborate to make a project better. And even to see the links that people are willing to go to to continue to see your project supported is so inspiring frankly. Personally, it's even given me so much respect and appreciation for open source projects. At this point, if I'm using some piece of software, okay, ironic because I'm saying this while I'm using a proprietary browser, I will generally try and lean towards the open source tools that are available based on the fact that it is insanely valuable to be able to have unobstructed access to the software even if something were to happen to business or to the person that's hosting the original you won't just get cut out one of these days do you know what i mean it gives you this like continuity and this reassurance that like you also have ownership of the software and i think that's a really important part of the open source philosophy Let's also talk about the developer experience because as I mentioned, that's kind of what the goal is that we're trying to do at Charm is we're glamorizing the command line, which means we're improving the experience of using the command line. The goal is to build something that is 
intuitive and enjoyable as long as it's something that has been widely adopted well tested and well loved historically it's a pretty good bet that it will age well it can take a lot of time to get familiar with the vim keybinds but once you do it makes a lot of terminal based applications more accessible to you given how loved these keybinds are and how widely supported they are not only command line based applications but even guis Another thing that's really important is when we're designing these things, we're continuously questioning our design and thinking if there are ways that we can improve it. And of course, the feedback from the open source community and the questions that we receive helps us identify these weaknesses and ways that we can improve. So that's incredibly valuable. We do, of course, though, <laughs> want to keep the breaking changes to a minimum. That's also very important for us is that continuity and consistency for the users. I don't know about you, but your girl has definitely accidentally upgraded to the next version of a piece of software and had it completely break compatibility. Your projects will continue to run even if it's been six months or a year or even more. Given that we're designing projects for developers, figuring out what to include in the API is pretty essential. The main questions that we're always asking ourselves are how can we make it easier? How do we make it so that we can completely avoid human error, I mean, as much as possible? And how can we design the API in a way that does work well with language servers? These are all really important considerations. Additionally, as I mentioned, TUIs are an important part of what we build. But what you'll see in a lot of the charm tools is that we kind of end up using both a CLI and a TUI. Now, some of you might be questioning why you even want a TUI. A TUI does allow for a certain amount of intuitive interaction with your software. It is nice, you don't have to really guess. And that's a really important part of a well-designed TUI is that it stays as intuitive as possible. Even questioning how the TUI should come about, how the data should be represented, all of that is really important for designing a TUI. And now in some cases, a CLI might be preferred or better, or even having them both work together, having both a TUI offering and a CLI could be the best case scenario. There is something quite timeless as well about TUIs. Like you look at something like Vim that has existed for decades at this point and is still so widely adopted and widely loved. Just because it is more similar to a graphical user interface doesn't make it any less compelling or relevant for command line applications. Another thing that's worth highlighting here is that it can also be very complementary to the CLI experience. And that's kind of what I mentioned when I'm saying that you can have the best of both worlds by kind of bringing the two together. Having a CLI command line interface is also incredibly valuable. This is what allows you to automate a lot of the operations and interactions with your application. One downside of CLIs is that they're less intuitive by nature. So they do require a bit more time to get familiar with. You gotta read through the help menu and then you can kind of start to figure it out. One thing that we try to do to keep our CLIs as nice and fun to work with as possible is that you can kind of play around with it and learn as you go. This means typically having very useful error messages for the user. That way, if they run a command incorrectly, they don't always have to run the help command to figure out how they can use something. You're giving them very useful feedback so that they can kind of just play around with it in a way that's comfortable for them. Another thing that's worth highlighting with the CLIs is in some cases, it might actually become more powerful by leaning into existing pipelines. And that's always something that's worth highlighting, especially those who might not know how to use those pipelines effectively. The README is an essential part of the development process for the Charm ecosystem. It is absolutely crucial to have a good README. We're not really ones for selling. I'm not a salesperson. No one on the team's really interested in selling it to someone. I think good software speaks for itself. But the thing is, is good software also needs to be obvious in how you can use it and how it adds value to anyone who's looking at it. The goal of the readme is for users to be able to look at this one document and they already know how they can get started, how they can get it installed, why they would want to use it, and they've got examples of it in action. So they don't have to necessarily pull the code, run it locally for them to get a feel of what they could expect from this piece of software. The README, which gives you an understanding conceptually of what the software does is incredibly valuable, but having real working examples 
in your repo that makes it available both online and offline. Having this documentation living with the code means that it is accessible to the users at any time. But these examples are crucial. It gives the users a cookbook, a way to kind of play around with working code that they can kind of tweak and try to tailor to their own needs and maybe even break it a bit to figure out what does and doesn't work with the library or the framework. Now, if you've seen anything charm, branding is a very important part of the charm world. Our goal with branding is mainly to make it unique and impactful and have it be inspired from sources outside of tech. It's really important to expand beyond what's comfortable, beyond what's normal, beyond what people expect and bring that unique perspective into something that is going to be so refreshing for a lot of your users. We want it to be very tongue in cheek, very fun, very playful, and just completely different from what you would expect, especially in a very serious command line environment that can be very intimidating for a lot of developers. Let's make it fun, let's make it playful, let's make it welcoming for developers of all levels. One thing that's really important as part of the Charm brand is also making sure that there is a consistent output of cool stuff. It's not just a one and done project that adds a ton of value and is really popular. It is a collection of cool projects and a company that you know is going to be continuously outputting these cool projects and supporting them. It's really important to branch out and try new things and experiment while keeping it still relatively interesting for the existing group of people. And in some cases, it won't be that interesting to a larger demographic, or it won't be interesting to a more niche demographic. There's going to be different projects for everyone, and there are going to be some projects that are, by nature, more widely adoptable by a larger group of people. VHS is a good example of that. Even GUM, anyone who's wanting to do interactive scripts, like GUM is such an easy approachable thing that you can integrate. And of course, marketing is important for any successful project. We like to post this on a lot of platforms where we know there's a lot of other developers. You're watching it. (laughs) This is one of the ways that we get the word out. And there are other spots as well that you can check out here. The thing is too, is word of mouth is incredibly valuable. And because we've been able to put out such cool things into the Go ecosystem, into the command line ecosystem, it has attracted a lot of developers who do have a platform. Anytime that anyone with any level of influence is able to share us with their circle, it's always much appreciated and very impactful for us. Now, as I mentioned before, Being in the open source space is incredible. It's also kind of difficult at times. When you have a popular open source project, you can get flooded with proposed enhancements, bug reports that really add up to an insane backlog. But what's important to us at Charm is being able to kind of analyze the trends in what people are saying, figure out what we need to prioritize, and then executing on that. So while we're not able to add every single feature that gets requested, it is still valuable insights to know what the general consensus is from our users. And unfortunately, because we can't bring in every new feature that every user wants, it also means that we have to get really good at saying no gracefully. We want people to contribute their ideas. In some cases, it just might not align with the vision for the project, or it just might cause the project to grow beyond the necessary size. The more intentional and directed your project is, Generally, the more helpful it is more broadly. You don't want something that has a ton of dependencies, a huge chonker of a code base. We wanna keep it light and functional and not make it too bloated. In a lot of cases as well, we're offered a lot of feedback that can help us actually improve the product itself, whether that is through just issues being created, having a discussion with the maintainers, and sometimes even entire pull requests with these changes implemented. It really does add so much value to the project when we're able to get the community's support and backing on all of these different projects. Now, another part that's really important is making sure that your users feel that there is some stability with these projects. In open source, it can be really eerie when you see that that whatever library or application you were hoping to depend on hasn't had any maintenance in 
years. That makes you start questioning, if I have an issue with this piece of software, will I be able to fix it? Will I be able to actually work with it? This is where supporting our applications becomes really important. Being persistent in making our software better, being consistent in delivering releases and interacting with the community that is expressing any kind of concern is a really important part of being part of the open source ecosystem and in building trust with your users. So that's something that we kind of have to continuously work on and maintain, show that these projects are stable and worth getting to know how to use them because we will have your back and we'll continue to support you with that endeavor. Oh, look, it's me. <laughs> and one of the ways that I try to continue to support our development team and our community is showcasing a lot of our different projects on YouTube. And that kind of can act as a second wave of new users coming in and getting familiar with our stuff. Another thing to keep in mind is that sometimes the success of these projects are not immediately obvious. We get some projects that go absolutely viral and then start to taper off. And we have other projects that have more slow and sustained growth and others that, yeah, they take a little bit and then they just whoop, get really popular all of a sudden. And I think it just has to do with the trends of what's happening on the internet, what's happening in the tech space the general sentiment of what people are looking for in the space. And sometimes it also might just mean that the first time we put it out there, the value wasn't immediately obvious or there was room to improve in the onboarding process. I hope this was interesting. I thought it was really cool the way that Christian broke down this blog post and I just kind of chimed in with my own thoughts on it and summarized it for you. I will have the blog post linked in the description. If you're an open source maintainer, I really hope that this helps you get your project more discovered. If you're ever interested in being featured on the Charm Community channel, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We would love to have you. It'd be great to be able to leverage our platform to help smaller projects gain visibility, especially from those that are written by people in our community. That being said, I'll see you in the next video. And thank you again for the 100, I was going to say 100 stars, 100,000, 100 million stars. That's so kind of you. Appreciate it. See you next time.